Okay, ladies, gentlemen, members of the audience, thank you very much for coming to today's council meeting. Um, we are recording this, and it is going out live, but we are having problems with the audio again, as Richard has pointed out several times. But this will be put out again as something you can watch back later on until it's live. So I just wanted to make you uh, aware of that. Right, without further ado, we'll start with the agenda. To note, and apologies of absence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've got approvals from councillors Atherton, Hawkins, Acton, and Bradley. Thank you very much. And the next on is to receive declarations of interest. Chair, Proxo, Al Leisure, uh, and Hanlock. Thank you. And we'll serve, sir. Same as David, uh, Proxo, and Ms. Leisure. Right. Chair. Yes. Well, My I deepest also apologies. Have to declare an interest <laughs> in Broxstow and also service allotments are coming up, I think, on the agenda. Yes, so they are. Well. Thank you very much. And also, John, about that. Thank you very much. Right, if nobody else has Yes, Tim. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if it's necessary, but uh, but it's probably good practice to uh, to mention that I've been contacted and it may be perceived as lobbying on the allotments issue. That's fine. Anybody else? Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Anybody else? Right. Anybody that's been there, we understand. Thank you very much. I better actually say then I have been contacted about item nine as well. Item nine. Yes, that's no problem. Who has been contacted? Okie dokie. Now, item number four is minutes of committee and advisory committees. To note, draft minutes. My apologies. Item three. Minutes of previous meetings confirm and sign the minutes of the following meetings as a correct record A 23rd of July 2021 and B 20 of August 2021. Um, Mr Mayor, right, um, 3, uh, 3A, um, the 23rd of July meeting, um, I corrected the previous meetings or the previous minutes or attempted to. Um, by stating that I never made a declaration of interest. Um, I'm not happy at all that this correction now requires a correction. It says in here that I asked to withdraw my declaration of interest, but I actually never made it. What I also said at the time, um, in my, uh, my friend and colleague, Councillor McRae's absence from that meeting, was that he also did not make a declaration of interest at the previous one, and, um, and that that was recorded inaccurately as well. Um, so uh, so uh, I'd please like that to be corrected, and I'm disappointed that it's now a correction of a correction. Um, furthermore, um, there's, a, uh, there's an item in here that also refers to, uh, to, to me and says that I requested to be removed from the planning committee, and this needed to be deleted from the list of appendix to the, uh, to the minutes. I made the rem I made that was again a correction, and therefore should have been corrected rather than minuted for review this time. Um, I don't want it to appear to the public like I'm just chopping and changing my mind all the time when actually it was I was just simply doing what's right for that item on the agenda and correcting the minutes. I'm going to pass this straight over to Sabrina because uh, this is her expertise. Yeah, I think um, for the first item, that's, that's not what I understood from what you said last time, so that's fine, I can change that. Again. Thank you. The planning committee, that's perhaps it's not worded well enough, but that's what I meant because you said that apparently at the main meeting, I think it was, you didn't want to be on the planning committee, and that's what this was meant to mean. Uh, if, if, if that was if, if that was your could, could would you uh, would you mind then town clerk please uh, just making that clearer so that it doesn't yeah. look like I'm just chopping and changing all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Right, we'll go to Pip and then over to Ross. Pip. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, under uh, minutes and uh, uh, committees and advisory committees, we've got at F. Um, Arts Events and Heritage, 5th of July. Can we just stop to number three, please? We're still on number three. We haven't gone on to number four yet. I will come back to you straight away when we get to number four, I promise. But we're stopping on number three at the moment. I think we need to be nice to be 1921F on the current minutes that we're looking at. Or number four, which is minutes, committees, and advisory committees. I'm not, I'm not confused. Number 
three is the minutes of previous meetings. Number four is minutes of committees and advisory committees. We're currently looking at the minutes of the meeting held on the 23rd of July. I haven't looked at that. My apologies, I'm in the wrong. Please continue. Uh, so it's um, item 19, 2021. Yep. Minutes of committees and advisory committees. Yes. Under F, Arts, Events and Heritage Committee of the 5th of July. It says that it's resolved, it was resolved that uh, the minutes of HR and policy review held on the 5th of July be noted. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, Peter. And once again, I apologise for being wrong. Uh, we'll go over to Ross and then over uh, to Richard. Ross. So are we... Are we just talking about the minutes on the 23rd of July? Just the 23rd of July. I'll just talk about the 23rd of July. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Richard? Yeah, I, I thought we were doing both sets together as well, but by the way you explained it. So am I right to speak about 20, on part B, 20th of August? Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, of course we can. Yeah. Right, so obviously we're going to have to make some uh, changes to that. So. So with the changes put over, we're going to have a right, we'll do Richard first and seconds. Yep. And we'll do Tim. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Tim. All in favour? All against? All opposed? Oh, Abstain. Sorry. My <laughs> right. And now we'll get on to number B. 20th of August 2021. Richard, you've asked first, so we're up. Yeah, I know, obviously, at the beginning, at the first bit, I did declare an interest as, as part of Broxenborough Council because I'm a substitute on the planning committee. But when we did actually go to the vote, which is the last item, 28, 2021, I did, I, I did actually ask if it could be written down that the reason I abstained is because I'm on the planning committee because I didn't want people thinking I just abstained to be awkward because, you know, perhaps I have been in the past. But I just wanted people to know that I was abstaining for the reason that I'm on planning at Broxdale. Just in case I got called up there and it's not on there, so thank you. But I did request it, and I'm sure that if any councillor asks for it to be noted, it should be, and I did make that request. You didn't ask for a recorded vote, No, I didn't ask for a vote. I asked for the way I voted to be written down. That's what I did ask for. I remember clearly asking for it. Ross, I was at the meeting. this to 30 minutes. We will all get three minutes to speak per person on this. Um, anything you wish to bring up here. Now, normally again, if you're from Branket, we wouldn't be covered. But again, we want to hear what you say. So again, you'll be welcome to speak as well. So if you have anything to say, members of the public, please can you stand forward? One voice for the, um, uh, is it, not only living in trouble, but if any of you, uh, the, the public who are here and work and have a business in place, we represent them. Yes, 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 yes. 
Either of which are then truly representative. Thank you very much. Has anybody got anything to say? No? Okay then. Moving on. Item number six. Town mayors and engagements. Now, I've been to quite a few. I really enjoyed these. Uh, some that other councillors told me about that you would go and do. And I've got some that I'm looking forward to go and see, including the uh, Hamlet Rocks. Um, and I was invited by Sharon Hands to go and watch an installation of the bleed kit that she raised money for, which I was really impressed with. I don't know much about the bleed kits, uh, but by the time I'd finished, I knew quite a lot about the bleed kits. They're a fantastic piece of kit, along with the defibrillators that are in the area as well. And they should both be commended for all involved raising money for either, either of those. And again, I've been asked to attend to the Macmillan's Coffee Morning, having lost two friends of mine to cancer this year and last year. It's one of them I will be really looking forward to going to. And I will always support Macmillan. They do a fantastic job. And thank you for the invites. If you look on the sheet as well, you'll notice other uh, invites that uh, I've attended including the favourite one so far that I have to look back at length, which was the garden competitions. Uh, I went to Munro's to open the coffee shop there, and they're fantastic people. They've taken the opportunity to open the store here, and they want to really engage with the public, and also with the council and community, which we have to back up, and we have to encourage, because I think the more people that help us all the way through on all levels, is fantastic. He's even talked about possibly looking at uh, opening a, a boxing, some sort of boxing ring that he's done before at the country for people that are troubled to help them put their aggression into that and also deal with their anger and aggression rather than taking it out with gangs and things like that. And I think something like that needs to be carefully looked at. I don't know much about it, I'm the first to say that, but it's something he spoke to me at great length about. And it's so wonderful to meet the good people of Stapleton, they be in the garden competitions, the uh, bleed kits, the uh, other events that I've been to, and events that I've yet still to go to. He says looking for them at the moment. Um, please bear with me a second. There we go, yes. Right, thank you very much, Verena. Uh, we've opened Run Rose, we've uh, visited to inspect the Walter Park VC Town Square flower beds. Special mention to John that he knows more about flowers than I think any of us put here. And he's really done the best in making sure that the bed there blossoms for everybody who uses that square, from the combined services to ourselves, to the markets, etc. His leadership has been brilliant in that. Um, the annual borough of Town Camp Parish Midlands, obviously, I attend there. There's a garden competition which I spoke. Sustainable Stapleford, again, a fantastic event, something I'm very uh, interested in. And again, thanks to Teresa and others who worked so hard and so diligently to do that. Um, again, talked on Midland Legends at uh, Stapleford at Oakus Pokes, I was invited to, where I met Frank Earp. A fantastic person that Richard has met as well who knows so much about the myths and legends of Stapleford and Nottinghamshire. Um, and as I said to Richard at the time, I had no idea that the Hemlock Stone isn't the original name of it. Um, it was just known as Hemlock Stone, like sandstone, etc. And it was known as a different name, and I'm really sorry I can't remember what it's called. But hopefully we can uh, find more out about that later. But it just goes to show how much it cho something changes in history. Um, we did the afternoon tea with the town there and a charity fundraising event that was fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, and it was great to see so many people coming to attend. And uh, everybody that did the uh, cream cheese, etc. And afternoon tea is well done. You did a fantastic job. And thank you everybody for attending. It was wonderful. Apart from you, I couldn't eat any cake on my diet. Um, and also, as I said, I'm looking forward to Hemlock Rocks and also the Macmillan Coffee Morning. I've got a full uh, itinerary for there, and all I can do is thank everybody who's invited the town there and um, 
and put him on to represent the council. Thank you very much. Right. Simon. Yes. Mr Mayor, may I, may I ask a question about one of the events? Of course It was the Sustainable Stapleford event. I think I mentioned it, well I did mention it in the Arts Events and Heritage Committee. I'm surprised by the way that it's been, I won't say minuted, but recorded on this, that it mentions the, um, that you attended the um, Carnegie Centre. Yes. But there were actually four venues. As I explained before, I am disabled and I was in a lot of pain. The only place I could come to sensibly and safely was this centre. If I'd have come round to all of them, I would have done. Um, limited to what I can do, it's only here. Yes, we'll just go to pick them out to you. Right. Might I ask if you invited the uh, Deputy Mayor, if you were feeling ill? Uh, the Deputy Mayor was there in attendance, yes. She was there in attendance, no, my mistake, no, she wasn't. Um, I was there in attendance as I was required to do. I'm just going to go straight over to the Deputy Mayor now. Uh, I was just going to say that in future, if something like that occurred, then I would be more than happy yeah, I'll take for my, my weight, as I did at the um, afternoon tea. And that was absolutely fantastic. I so really did help it. I'm, you know, I'm, that's part of my role, I assume. It is indeed. Yeah. As I said, for sustainable state, but it was decided that I actually went here. It was easy for everybody to come to. Yes, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just. <laughs> I think that I think that one of these probably doesn't belong on this list um, because and, and and incidentally you know before I get before I seem judgmental yet again um, I, I thank you for this um, because you'll you'll remember that I did take on bridge at the last meeting that there wasn't a list of mayor's events and obviously the mayor is a pivotal um, focal point and um, and front face of uh, of this council so it is really important that us as the uh, other members of this council get to know what our public presence is in the in the body of yourself or whoever's carrying the the chains. I think that's really important to keep. And thank you for um, bringing it back for uh, for this meeting. Um, the annual borough um, parish and town meeting um, that isn't a mayoral event. That is an event that uh, that the borough invites representatives. Um, it suggests representatives, but can, it can be any delegate um, from all of the parishes and towns within Broxtow uh, Borough area, and um, and it doesn't make a point of uh, of inviting mayors. Um, so therefore, I'm glad that you attended, but I think it would be factually correct to say that you attended as Councillor Simon Frost, not as the mayor. So it probably doesn't belong on this list. I'm just going to pass over to uh, Right. Well, may, may I ask in the future that uh, that we use the um, you know the, the definition of whether we're talking about the office of the mayor um, or the uh, or the person uh, that uh, that currently wears the chain carefully in the future because this could cause incidents. Of course, the reason the borough doesn't make a formal invitation to invite the mayor of places because not town councils of which um, there are uh, there, there are three. Um, uh, there is only Kimberley doesn't have a mayor; it has a chair. Um, Eastwood has a mayor. Um, there are uh, there are other parishes um, such as uh, such as Greasley that uh, that have a chair but not a mayor. And I know that Broxtow isn't in the habit of giving preferential treatment. Now, um, so I think because you attended without the chain on, and because the invitation was for delegates from the town council, not from not for mayors, then it's important to be specific like that. There's uh, there's more at play here um, than, uh, than than just simply whether whether yourself. Um, attended something and then, you know, slap the badge and imply the chain on top of that. Thank you very much, Tim. We'll take that on. We'll move on. Straight over to David. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, um, I've been a councillor for a long, fairly long time here now, and um, I've been obviously up to Brock, though, when we've had parish uh, meetings and so forth. 
Um, when I was mayor twice, um, obviously um, you get invited up there, but you don't get invited up there as the mayor, and obviously one doesn't wear one's chain. Uh, uh, and that's that's the way things have always been. I'm going to stop you there, David, because we have actually gone through this with Tim said exactly the same thing. I agree totally with what you both said, and we'll take it from there and we'll make sure that that's all fair. Thank you very much for bringing that to attention. Richard? Yeah, it's, it's nice to see this, and it's, not, it's nice to know the mayor's enjoying it. I mean, I know I did, and I know everyone else has before, and I'm sure whoever does it next will, so it is good, it's important. Mm -hmm. I also like to see when I see it on social media the mayor using the hashtag Mayor of Stapleford because again it makes it easier to find things and that um, for mayor events. But the, my question is, I don't understand why the hashtag's being used for events that's not mayor events. Like the, the, there was an event on Ickins Lane Park that was not the town council was event and the mayor wasn't there and it had got the hashtag Stapleford Town Council. Mayor of Stapleford and I asked, I had lots of people saying to me why was that, so I said I'd raise it in the council meeting. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't on the town councils, it was on Simon's personal one. But it's, the hashtag's being used when it's not official mayor events, and I just think you've got to be careful where you're using it, because an official invite is an official invite. If you're not, then you shouldn't really be using it. Yes, I'll make sure that it doesn't happen again, and I do apologise. Right. Clark's report, man. This is a notion report. I know this is just that. Thank you, Mayor. I very proposed to read through the whole thing. Hopefully, I'm going to have a look. <laughs> I've been rather busy, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and obviously, I am working too much on my own. Uh, well, since the end of July, I've been working on my own, uh, trying to get things sorted. Uh, but during the sort of interim from January to July, I've been also working with new staff and having to train them on top of everything that I am doing. So, um, this is just a round up, hopefully, uh, which covers most of what I've been doing for the year. I'm sure I've forgotten things, there's lots of stuff that probably hasn't made it onto here that I'll remember at some point in the future that I have achieved as well. Uh, but if anyone's got any questions, then please do ask. Yes. Um, can I just say, um, I think everybody on the council who's read through this would like to say thank you very much mm -hmm. for your continued dedication to being involved. I know this is very difficult with a lack of staff and uh, I do appreciate the, those hours that you are putting in because, you know, I get to see the timesheets and I know the hours and the funny hours that you're working to cover things in the evenings, things in the mornings and all the sessions and how flexible you are being. So I just think I'd like to say a big thank you for doing that. Right. And on to financial update. Um, Mr Mayor. Yes. A um, couple, couple of questions um, through you. The this is just a noting report. Yes, it's questions. Okay. Um, the item... Um, I'll give an observation first off, but we're talking about this later. Um, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a bit disingenuous to, uh, to, in terms of representation of opinion um, to, uh, to say that there have been misconceptions seem to have cropped up with regards to the allotment. I happen to know, and I'm sure other councillors do, that... Uh, people are bloody livid. Uh, we'll come on to that later. Um, 1.4. Um, I find it quite ambiguous and I don't really know what it's referring to. It says that uh, to sort out the road situation on Albany. Um, I may have missed it I, if there has been a report on this, but at the moment the road situation left me and I, all I have on my notes is a question mark uh, going, I don't know what the road situation is, so I, I'd be grateful to know. Uh, thank you. The... Um, uh, Similarly, on 2.4, four ideas have been submitted and feedback is awaited. Um, would, uh, could you uh, uh, elaborate very briefly on what the, what the four ideas are? Because, I, again, I'm not in the, in the loop on this. Thank you. Two point four, four ideas. Four, four. four ideas. So, I can't remember these now. So one was um, 
like a, a writing workshops to um, lead up to, as you know, we do the um, writing competition in February for Valentine's Day. We did it, we ran it this year, it didn't really go anywhere. So we're trying to do that again through the arts um, group. And this is sort of an extra thing on this um, to have uh, writing workshops which will lead up to a performance on the town square. So uh, the other th this kind of links into another thing that we're wanting to do, which was the, um, I'm, I'm calling it square sounds at the moment, but music on the square over a lunchtime period on a Saturday, uh, to try and sort of kind of backdrop to people coming shopping and trying to encourage people to come and stay in town. Uh, what were the other things I tried to remember what they were? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind. I don't mind town clock. Sorry, through you, through you, Mr. Mayor. I don't mind. I don't mind if you get back to me on that. I am interested to know. And the uh, and the ones that you've described actually sound really good. So thanks yeah. for the thanks for the report. Well, David, uh, you could uh, yeah, uh, it's through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks, Mark. I'm looking at your report of six point uh, one and two. Obviously, the annex at the moment is uh, going to be losing us money, income, um, and. And you say that you've actually had some people look around. Um, is there a problem or how the place looks, uh, or what, or have they given you feedback? Um, it's the people that have looked at it. There's nothing wrong with the inside of such. There's, there's a bit of um, work to do on the wall. There's like um, the plaster's got dot and dab marks on where they've taken off the tiles and things. So it's just me um, doing it. But it's it's been painted and it looks fine inside. Otherwise, then that that's just my OCD. I don't know. Uh, but they, the people that have been interested, uh, one was a painting contractor who were going about it on the grapevine and just never came back to me, was interested, then never came back. And then another was a charity group uh, that was interested and they sort of have been back a few times and had a look and, and then sort of under and they're not quite sure that it's quite right for them for what they need to use. So um, now I'm at the point where I've got now no interest, so I need to go and, and let it uh, go through what else. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you permit, um, uh, can we actually talk about the um, last year's accounts? No, I think we can because they've been signed off on it, haven't they? I'm not completely wrong on that. This, yeah, because it's not on the agenda. Do you mean the audit that's come? The audit that's come through. Yeah, so that's the final audit that's come through. Yeah, no, that will go to the November meeting. If you've got questions outside, I'm happy to take those, but it's not on the agenda, so we can't be Thank you, David. Yes. Richard. Oh, sorry, I thought I'd point it over that way. Yeah, no, I've, it's, just, it's just a general question. I've seen some of the... We're looking at the payments thing, aren't we? Is, I'm, I'm on the right thing, aren't I? OK. There's just a few things on there where we've been ordering stuff off Amazon, and I know they're pretty quick and they're convenient. You know, I've used them myself like most people do. But I just think some of them things, especially like artificial flowers, there's, there's shops on the high street that sell them, and I think as a town council... 
instead of buying stuff off Amazon. I know it's convenient, it's quick and all that lot, but I just think it'd be nice if we could actually support the, street, the shops on the high street that sell these actual items. I mean, it's got things like serving tongs. You can win bargain buys all the pan shop. You've got artificial flowers. There's buckets full of them outside bargain buys. It'd just be nice to support the local businesses. That, that's all. But thank you anyway. <laughs> So we need to approve the payment from the first of story. So have five dots. Oh, there we go. Theresa first. And Richard for second. All in favour? All yes. All abstain. Thank you very much. And once again, over to Sabrina. And then Right, and now we're going on to item nine. And what I'm going to do is pass this straight over to um, Teresa, if that's all right. <laughs> to, sorry, to Sabrina, if that's all right. Thanks, uh, Mr. So, um, obviously, I've been a, a report for the, the options that we've discussed at the working party, uh, but I want to just give an overview because um, I know we've been to talk about this uh, as a community. Um, this is the early stages of what is a 12 month project. So, as is it now the boundaries uh, that are affected, and all the parishes are looking at uh, being looked at, um, the borough talks to us as an early consultee to see what we think about what they're putting forward, and then to see if we've got anything that we might think we might want to put forward, um, and then they will look at it all in advance. So, they will, whatever we decide tonight is not a final position by any long stretch of the imagination, it will be submitted to the borough. And they will look at that and see what, what can be made as a viable boundary, uh, because what they're looking to do is correct some anom anomalies, can't say the word, anomalies, <laughs> um, where the boundaries run through properties or through somebody's garden or it takes a couple of properties off the street, um, and maybe people have got to go out of the parish to come back into a polling station. So that's what they're looking to fix um, with this review. Uh, and then obviously there's other things that people might want to put forward and suggest as well. So you've got the options that the, uh, the Borough Council have put forward, which are a few of tiny tweaks around the edges um, and just correcting some of those anomalies. And then the Working Party have looked um, at, at those options and had to think about, well actually, this doesn't happen very often, uh, these reviews, so if you want to do something differently, you need to look at it now. Um, and so that's what has happened. They've come forward with uh, two other options, a uh, third which would encompass them all, uh, all the same of what the borough have suggested. But chance we could decide they want any of those options and may come forward with something else. Uh, but this is, as I say, a 12 month um, project. Um, when the submissions will be received, the borough will look at those and then they will decide what they want to put forward as the uh, things that they will go for in the order for a public consultation which starts in December. And I think that's like a, a two, three month um, process. Uh, and then the process will move on to the final stages, taking into account all of that to be put in place with an order which will come into force for the 2023 elections. Um, and that's, that's basically the end of the process. It's a lot more complicated than that, but that's an outline <laughs> of how it works. Jim. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I think it's, I love the idea of options. I really do, but I was so, so shocked and disappointed when I read that there was a recommendation on the, um, uh, on the options, because that wasn't necessary, I don't think, and, um, and I was even more shocked when the recommendation was the most extreme and 
perceivably land grabby of, uh, of all of the four. Uh, looking at option four myself, I think that that is absolutely perfect. Um, it tweaks up rogue elements that have always annoyed many of us. In fact, in fact probably, uh, pro probably all of us, like um, the, uh, the anomaly at the south end of Trowel Park Drive, which should, to all intents and purposes, and by the local residents' views, which, which I have canvassed, it should be a part of Trowel. And yet, because it happens to cross Boundary Brook, is in the parish of Stapleford, specifically Stapleford North Ward, that's, that's good to, uh, to clean that up. Uh, Valmont Road... There's a, um, a, a few houses out of the, uh, out of the row um, happen to be set back just past the arbitrary imaginary line yeah. um, that, somebody, uh, that somebody drew on a map once upon a time, probably at about the time of the Doomsday Book or something. That makes a lot of sense to, uh, to keep communities contiguous and make sure that neighbours are represented by the same people as neighbours wherever possible. Um, the, the, that's, that's good. To go over and above that is... Dangerous, um, and to uh, and to make a recommendation for the most extreme version, I think is uh, I think is darn right scary. Um, if this council wants to extend its influence, then I think we need to sell it a lot harder. And at the moment, I wouldn't advocate. Than anybody, than anybody else takes representation by this, uh, by this council because I don't think that we're doing a particularly brilliant job at, um, at achieving value for money. I'm sure that if the residents of, from one side of Ulam Lane up to, um, the, um, up to the Bramkirk Sherwin roundabout were to, uh, were to look enviably next door at what's going on in Stapleford and say, hey, all of that's being done by the town council, then there might be uh, less of a public outcry than we've, uh, than we've seen in the last few days. Um, but, uh, but I don't think it is, and I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's fair to, uh, to, to make a recommendation. It's, what's annoyed me the most, Mr Mayor, mm -hmm. and I will wrap up with this, Absolutely. what's annoyed me the most is that it gets... It drags our name through the mud. I know... And we all know that, they, that that recommendation was made by a working party of four people. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't understand the process. And now it's set community against community as Bramker thinks that Stapleford's trying to take over. And I've been trying to assure people Stapleford is not trying to take over. Your, the, 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 your address and your street signs aren't going to change. However, we are elected people that are meant to understand the thoughts and feelings and reactions of our local community. So to make a recommendation, albeit one that I hope will get voted down um, in, favour of, uh, in favour of option four at, uh, at this sitting, has caused a massive amount of upset and it was an irresponsible thing to do when we could have made the sensible recommendation and then decided, hey, you know, maybe we want to tweak that on the night. So, uh, so please, in the future, if, if somebody sits to make a recommendation on a working party, could they just think about how the residents are going to react to this, what thoughts it's going to leave in their head, and what reputation it leaves this council with? Because the damage is done now. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to Richard and then over to Theresa. Yeah, thank you. I've got a statement to read out here off uh, a Bramcote resident, so... I apologise if I get some other words wrong. You know what I'm like. So no, it's, no it, <laughs> Thank you. It won't take me a minute. So this is a statement for Stapleford Town Council, and, and, and I'll hand this into the town clerk if you want. Then is it easy for in a minute? And if you want me to email it, yeah, I'll do that as well. Cut and paste pretty good, isn't it? Right, so this is a statement for Stapleford Town Council meeting on the 17th of September 2021 relating to agenda item 9, I think that's right, isn't it? Yes. From Sue Sambles, editor for Bramkit Today. And she says... My husband and I, that, that's her, not me, obviously. My husband and I moved into Bramkett as newlyweds in 1989. We started our family in 1992 and began to feel part of, our, of the community of Bramkett. Initially with a Bramkett-based NCT group, later St Michael's toddler group and then local schools. I became more involved in supporting the Bramkett community this century when I represented Bramkett Neighbourhood Watch at police safety meetings. Started regularly attending the Bramkett CAP meetings and in 2011 joined three other Bramkett residents to create a community website and 10 years later we are still serving the Bramkett residents as volunteers by keeping them updated about matters relevant to them. In more recent years I've become actively involved with Bramkett Neighbourhood Forum 
Brancourt and Stapleford Community Hub, aka Brancourt Hills Cafe in the Park, and I'm a member of a small group of St Michael's and All Angels Church, Brancourt. Whilst I acknowledge Stapleford has a strong community feel to it, and as our nearest town, we have used Stapleford services over the years, plus those in Beeston and other surrounding areas, I strongly identify as a Brancourt resident and I'm not in favour of any action to move the border. Geographically, Brancourt may be split by a large island, but we are a strong community. And if you look at residents' comments at, and then there's a link to the Brancourt Today article that's on there, I'm not going to read a link out. And then it says, and particularly on our Facebook post, you will see that I am not alone. And now that's on behalf of Sue Sambles, so thank you for letting me do that. Thank you very much. Teresa. Okay, um, yes, I know. I've seen the stuff, I've seen the comments. Um, just to make the process clear, what the uh, working group was asked to do was to make a re recommendation to council. And obviously, to do that, we actually have to put it on an agenda which has to be made public. So the recommendation was to council to be discussed as council, not to go beyond staple for just per se, but obviously we know that other people are going to see it. But I can't see how we could make a statement about what we would like to see unless we made it public to everybody. Um, yes, I did go, well, we did discuss the options and we did go for the, the biggest changes, but I think it would have been almost remiss of us not to suggest the big changes first and then almost try and hide it. And then if this council had decided they wanted to go with the big changes, then it would have been more up. If anything, we've actually elicited the views of people early on so we can consider them. And I am perfectly willing to abandon this first option because we know it won't progress beyond Borough. And that is what this process is about. So I don't actually regret suggesting it one little bit. And I'd just like to clear up some of the misconceptions that have actually come out in those messages. And like you said, Tim, it's not actually going to not be Brancourt. And I think we need to explain that, you know, we're changing an electoral boundary, not trying to make a change to a town's name. Part of the process is that we could actually change the name of this council. This council could be, instead of Stapleford Town Council, Stapleford and Brancourt West Council, and actually integrate that way. There are other options, you know. It's not about trying to obliterate the character of Brancourt at all. And I take your point about, you know, enviously looking over from one side of New Lamb Lane to the other. But in all honesty, um, we know that the people in this green area of Brancourt uh, that we've highlighted use Stapleford and see Stapleford as their central point for, for easy access to goods and services. Um, what we were actually thinking of is actually inviting them to be part of the community that gets a say in how those goods and services and events are run, because currently they don't. Um, and also, yes, there is a financial implication to this, and I won't lie about it. If we took on that area, we would probably incre increase the number of residences by about 10%. Um, in truth, what that means is we can share our precept over a larger area. Effectively, we could reduce it for everyone in Stapleford. And at the end of the day, I have been elected to represent the interests of the people of Stapleford. And we've heard a lot about what the people in Brancourt would like. And I'm happy to take those comments on board because they will influence the decisions we put forward. But I think it would be in the interests of the people of Stapleford to actually consider this, which is why I proposed it and was one of the people that did propose it. And I don't mind that you don't think that things aren't being work, run well in this council, being Minister Mayor, mm -hmm. but we've got to consider that this isn't necessarily about this administration. This administration ends in two years' time. We don't know who's going to be sat around this table in two years' time. And what I am concerned about is putting those people in the strongest possible position to represent the interests of the people of Stapleford that I possibly can. So I will actually say, I am happy that there is strong enough feeling that we won't go with this, but I am also very happy that I did propose it because you will never get the bog standard vanilla suggestions from me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Richard? Yeah, I'll just a little, it's just a quick question because that was a statement I read out. It does say on here about um, it would allow the residents to access the town mayor. I was just wondering how many residents have actually made that request? And were they also told that this is a mayor of Broxstow as well? Who, who obviously it's me at the minute, but in the future, if it's someone else, and as Theresa said, moving forward, there is 
a mayor of Broxtow. So I'm just wondering how many, it does say in here residents of the area have done that, so how many of them have actually requested service visit from this mayor and how many of them were actually told that there is a mayor of Broxtow? Those, those uh, comments didn't come through my office, it was councillors that have said they've been speaking to people in the community, so I've not had any that I'm aware of, um, but it was councillors that have said they've been speaking to people and they've said people were disappointed when they couldn't get the, the town mayor to come to their event. Just to quicken on this myself, I mean, I'm aware, what Teresa said, I fully agree, we've got to move forward, right? It's getting a bit nitty gritty again. I was looking at some of the comments that were made by certain Brankert people or about the state of this and state of that, and the same can be said by Spurs of what we say about them. At the end of the day, we're all here to improve this community, right? I'm sure when it goes to the borough, There'll be a lively debate on whatever we rep, uh, say, and the debate will go on for days. Because most of these boundary changes do. Whether people at this level are aware of it or not, I'm not sure. It's the same at, at the minute at Orgleth and Cossel. Everybody's arguing because Cossel, they're moving the border across the road, so everyone's moaning about this, that, that again. But remember, what happens is, once everyone's con been consulted, it goes to the borough. The borough will then make its recommendations to go to the Boundary Commission. So while we having pointless trying calling each other here, I can't work it out. I think what we need to do is think about what we want positive for our area and move forward from them. Because like Teresa said there, some of us might not be here in two years. We might not be voted in again. So it's for us children and everyone else, not for us what's best for us because you could argue that most people in Brankett send their kids to Wadsworth or St John's or where are them schools? Are they in Stapleford or unless I, am I confused? So the, there's loads of arguments about what's right and what's wrong. Let's just try and think what we're putting together and put it through properly and have a good think about what we're saying. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go see you next then Ross. Just to answer Richard, um, yes, and yes, they were. Thank you. Um, I had a couple of requests for the town mayor, and I explained you were out of the border, so yes, I did, on both. That's counts. appreciated, thank you. Um, and on the border issue, I think, I think it's a shame that it's been made into a us and them kind of situation, mm. because... There, it was these requests that I've been asked, they didn't realise they were in Bramper, and it's like, it's an invisible line we're arguing over, and most of them people are in the county catchment where the border is, um, and the house price and prices haven't lowered because they're in the borough, in the county catchment, it's, you know, it's an invisible line. Um, and it's caused all this distress. I, I, I mean, Chair, through you, I, I mean, a, a couple of ladies have rang me up. Obviously, I suppose they know I'm postman, yep. even though I'm not this month, right? And the first thing the lady said, oh, I have every respect for everybody. Mm. I, I'll not change, right? The first thing she said, and I, I actually did laugh over the phone, she says, well, my ass price will go down. So I says, well, where do you live? I'm not saying where she said. I said, well, your house price not going down there. I said, some, some house price is in the but I said, Pippin's start at a million. Mm. And hers was actually less. So, I, you know, we're out there, so I said, where do you get, where does this come from? About your house will be go down in value when some houses in Stapleford start at a million and on Tote Lane in particular and all the way up. So, Whatever negativity is going on, and, and we're in a period now where everybody always wants to do is talk negative. From bus, bushes not being cut, to roads having potholes in, and that's the way our job is to make sure that they get the right information and we get the right deal for the people of this town, or this area, to be honest, not this town, this area. I have to agree with you, John, I think we do have to talk <laughs> positivity rather than negative. And as John pointed out as well, 
we can put our information through and then it's over to the borough. The borough mm. will make the decisions. We are just, if you like, putting these ideas forward and listening to what the people are saying. Right, I'm going to go uh, Tim, then David, and anybody else? Thanks. I'm not going to. I'm not going to repeat anything. I um, anything I said earlier. Um, just to uh, just. I, I will just. Uh, I will slightly. I will reiterate. Though we know our area. We know what people's reactions are going to be. We know what the misconceptions. I've made it myself. My first. My first delivery round of the uh, of the Liberal Democrat Focus when I joined the party. I got a bit carried away on the other side of Ulam Lane. I got a right telling off. Mm. I can tell you that. And that's when I learnt where the border is and learnt what the reaction of the public to that border is and how strong the community identities are and how people do not want to cross the beams. I think that the recommendation made by this council, while I am always an advocate of exploring all the options, I think the recommendation made by the working group to this council that we know is going to go on public documentation because, um, Theresa's right, it was always going to be on a public document and a matter of public record. That it's, it's clumsy politics to not take into account how people are going to react. If we know our people, then, uh, then we should, uh, then sh we should be able to predict how they, um, how they react, and we should be able to, uh, to uh, mitigate that with more sensitive communication. In, but I will, uh, but I will stop there and say, uh, and say, I think that hopefully um, we're all agreed that the, uh, the, 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 the borough's base recommendations on the. Um, on, on the options, um, it's actually an eminently good one that will solve up a lot of historical issues. So may I take this opportunity, Mr. Mayor, to, uh, to formally um, propose option uh, that, that, we, uh, that we as a town council recommend our support of option four to the borough. I'm going to let Theresa have come back on that one. Before we go on to that, I just want to explain why you suggested the um, option four and
from the towns they're in. So there's actual real advantages to us thinking about extending that area. And also it would give people of Stapleford a say in some of the developments that are going ahead because I certainly feel we've not been consulted by the Chetland Neighbourhood Plan Group as much as I would like. Um, I did check with, I think her name's Janice, is it? Yeah. 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 Who, who, who talked about this, and I said, will it affect the neighbourhood plan area? No, it won't at the moment because obviously the neighbourhood plans are in. So this isn't a try to stop the development going ahead if HS2 goes ahead. We don't know what's happening with HS2, we don't really know what's happening. So it did seem appropriate to actually consider these anomalous buildings actually bringing them in to Stapleford. Um, because that is the traditional boundary. It's, um, I don't know, I was certainly um, disappointed when the ecclesiastical boundary changed for, mm. to take it to there. It didn't seem to, there was no consultation on that whatsoever um, that I, I saw, and they just decided to change the boundary. And I feel that we're going to, you know, we've heard how passionate people in Bramford are about retaining mm. their sense of identity. I'm also passionate about that, I completely understand it, and to me that is still part of Stapleford. We've made the argument before that the tram stop is in Stapleford. Um, obviously, we acknowledge that um, the totem neighbourhood, uh, the totem plans that are coming forward may change where that boundary is in the future. You know, it might not be practical because there might be things that are built over the line. But when we looked at the maps, because we did as a steering group look at a lot of maps, we looked at what Totem had got planned, what, where things are going. A lot of that area is apparently going to be an innovation village, which may not go ahead now because it's going to be a mixture of residential and commercial businesses um, in that area. That's probably one of the things that's going to be most affected depending on what the decision is made. Um, but all of the plans seem to have a continuation of the tram line which we felt in the future could be the boundary, an acknowledgeable boundary between Stapleford and Totem, should that, those plans go ahead and when those plans go ahead. So what we proposed was that this park be included in Stapleford, those four properties, because they are anomalous anyway, and we felt that there was a reason, an argument to say, well, these are anomalous and they can come into Stapleford with a view of what would this look like in the future. So that is why um, we suggested you know, putting that bit in. So I can't remember which option this is. I think is this option two? So I would argue that option two is the one that we go for. Just going to come back before I hand over for a second. I remember Richard telling me repeatedly that he's responsible why the state of the sign is where it is. He made sure yeah, that guilty. that is in Stapleford. And when they were talking about changing it um, a few years ago, he nearly went absolutely nuts. There was no nearly. <laughs> and the sign's still there, so I won. You see, that's why I'm supporting option two, because I believe that that should be parish in Stapleford. Because as Richard has done, he's put the mark there. That is our mark in Stapleford. That's what Stapleford comes to. And we need to make sure that that is represented on this council. Now, I've said my bit, my deepest apologies. I think it's first over to uh, David, then Richard, and yes, so David. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm not a councillor that normally goes way back in time. But at one time, um, Stapleford Town Council uh, had another name to it, and it was uh, Sandy Acre and, uh, and Stapleford Council. Now, I've looked at the plan, all of them, and I've listened to a lot of people who I've spoken to in, in Stapleford, and at Brancott, the people of Brancott don't seem to want Stapleford moving um, taking over more land. The people in Stapleford don't really want it changing at all. In 2011, um, this boundary, commission this boundary changes, possibly, um, it came up before. Uh, we made recommendations regarding uh, Valmont Road, etc. Um, and it, it 
they decided, the Commission decided that things would stay the same. Now, obviously, obviously this Council and Councillors have ambitions about what they would like to see, the town expanding or not. Uh, and obviously we have, whatever you do, we have to be careful the way we do it. Now, I have to say to you, looking at the plans and, and, the, and the printed word laid out, is that in my opinion, then I think that possibly the Boundary Commission will go for plan four. But if, you, if it's decided that it goes to plan two, I think at this particular time, um, I don't think the council um, um, are going to find it very easy in the future um, if they're taking over more land. Yes, there might be more money, might be this, that and the other, but at the end of the day, the council has to show that it's doing really well as it is now, yes, and let people at Brancourt stay where they are and let people in Stapleford stay where they are. And I, and I truly believe uh, um, the Boundary Commission won't make any changes at all for maybe the third time running. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thanks very much for your input. Who's next? Bob. Oh, no, no, it's Richard then, Bob. Well, I've gone straight for one, so let Bob go first. Um, I think this is not talking about land, and it's certainly not about housing prices. It's a bit of a fickle matter. I mean, two words to say on that. People can't. Who would have thought? I mean, that's it. Um, and uh, people in Bradford need to look over their shoulder and see the house prices continually up, up to them. So, Let's forget about that, if nothing about that. I've got a friend who's died two weeks ago who was born in Stapleford, and they are a bit more still born in Stapleford, educated there, business there, married there, parents lived two hundred yards from where we are, she's now buried here. But she lived all her life near the Green Garden Road, that's the first house that was just like people who wrote in. So to right from that side, she always thought it was the political boundary, it was a little bit ridiculous, but she got her house back to go down. So, I think things have been up a bit now. Are those up on the settlers who argue that they're worth just as much in their four bedroom, large mm -hmm. garden, cobby sack house, and so on in Brancourt? So, but let's not start turf war here. <laughs> um, it's all about who feels represented. And if Brancourt, their residents feel that they're adequately represented by who they've got at the moment, why should we disturb that? However, for future representation, as Richard, um, when we went on that boundary walk, said, look at this, this should all be ours. Um, I'm, I'm edging to, I was going to go for edging to the three. Mm. I mean, it was Richard who, when I was looking at this with the floor, his words kept going through my mind. When we were on the uh, neighbourhood plan before I was councillor, he kept on saying, that's ours. <laughs> Every time, and I said that to Teresa when we were sitting there, and to you self, and it's a case of like, that's got to be looked at. And that's why that's on there, because I agree with Richard on this one. That should be ours because it goes into where he's got the post. So, you know, Richard's post, and yeah, I'll give him his due for that. So, yeah, that's where I think it should be. Anyway, we've all known this, and my deepest apologies, I'm rambling again. Richard, it's over to you. Yeah, my dad always said, argue if you're right, and I know I was right on that one, that's why I argued. You know, I, I wish he was here to see me get that one right. I mean, I, I always turn up at these meetings with an open mind, and I, and I think most of us do, and, and, and I think that's what you should do. Um, I, I was actually looking at option four, but I, I, I keep going back to two as well because that bit at the bottom, right, there's nothing on there at the minute. There's, there's going to be development on there at some point. It's, it's just going to happen, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it, you've got to build some. I'm not saying I agree with it or not because I, I have, I have um, fought against building in places like that. But it, it, I remember when I was first on the town council, it's what I thought David was going to say, actually. And there always used to be something on the agenda called Black Pad. Nothing ever happened. It was just on the agenda, and and I think it's the path that kind of goes all the way down to Asda. We, we're not. We don't need to move that far, because Graham Hill would not be happy. Um, but I I think I've, I've option two is for me because I, I just think that bit at the bottom it is ours. We need to, you know, claim it back kind of thing. Um, it, it is the historic boundary. We're not going into something that was never ours to start with, and I just think yeah, that's you know I I, I have changed my mind a little bit. And I just think that's the one I'm going to go for as well. Thank you very much, Richard. John, over to you. Well, just say, I disagree with him. I think that his border should have been 
is Yulan Lane one should have been further up, right? If you look at it, because the the actual parish boundary, because I'm not bad at history, the actual parish boundary is actually Bolt Lane, which then cuts across, yeah. cuts, cuts across the A52, then goes along the back end of Chilwell Barracks, mm -hmm. all the way down, all the way down where Teresa's bought up about them houses, the two houses at the top, which it actually in Stafford as well. Right, that's the actual parish. Because I talked to Mr. Negus that lives on Bolt Lane, yes. and he's very, She's he's very, yeah, he's very <laughs> wired up, right? Uh, and, and my point is, is that, yeah, <coughs> we, we have actually lost, because if, this, if, if the Chilwell neighbourhood plan goes ahead, what Richard's always said before, and I've said, is that Toten tram stop is in Stabo, end of story. Mm. Yes. And always has been. But it was always forced down our throats by politicians who know more than us, right, that it was going to be the Tote and Tram stop. And it was forced down the throat. All right, I don't think Tote and Tram stop would have sounded so good, right, but at the end of the day, it was still our land. Yes. Right. And, and, and that's the way I feel. I'll have to go to Richard, then Bob. Yeah, I can say option, option two does yeah. go up to Bulk Lane. It's... It does. Where, where John said it does. Yeah. It does go up to there. Oh, well, I remember all that. Yeah. yeah. You showed me with great uh, reverence. Two the marks. Map. Still got the maps. Yes, it should all be around my maps. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, if you look at the first neighbourhood plan, we have yeah. uh, an ex-town planner. He says yes. it's very illogical how everything seems to be going up um, near the school. He says that's not the natural centre of the town, whereas it naturally should be connected despite the A52, um, which he said it should be slowed down um, and, and to go that way. And I'm starting to see what he's saying. Yeah, it is when you look back at all this and we've all had our discussions and things start to drop into place, as they do, especially when you've spent seven years, is it now, Theresa, to make the plan? Yeah, seven years. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a case of like things that were said and you just think, okay, I'll pop this over there. And now, just go back in for an occasion like this, and it makes sense. So, is there anybody else who wants to say? Sorry, just before um, we sort of go ahead to any sort of option selection here, um, I just want to draw everybody's attention to obviously the, the northern end of the boundary, which uh, the borough's recommendations are there for tidy ups and anomalies. So, I wonder if you want to select a plan option, it would also include the changes that the borough. Well, I'd like to propose option two, including the changes that Broxstow's made at the top end, of, <laughs> and obviously there's one on the right as well, isn't there, for the little Valmont bit. That, that's my, if someone wants to second that. Second by Theresa. <laughs> Mr Mayor? Yes. I already made a proposal. Oh, sorry, you did, I was never you? given the option to uh, to, to have a seconder, so I would uh, I would ask if anybody would be interested in yes. seconding um, option four. If we, uh, if we and if you wouldn't mind me coming back before we uh, before we go to that vote to uh, to summarise why option four as opposed to option two, since that wasn't on the table when I made that proposal. Mayor. Yes. Can I please excuse Of course you may. What we'll do is we'll just have an adjournment for our fellow councillors then out and then we'll come back to it. And then we'll come straight back to Tim. <laughs> Thank you. 
okay, it's going. Well, well it, was, it was waiting for someone to hurry down. I don't yeah. mean it that way, but it's just been getting it from there. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's no problem. What I'm going to do is go straight to Tim now to outline why he thinks option four should grow. Tim, over to you. Thank you. Um, right, more arguing against option two, because that wasn't on the table when I, uh, when I last spoke. Um, the, the A52 wasn't traditionally there in the uh, in the in, in uh, anywhere it, it just didn't exist so uh, so you know there would have been at one time a uh, dotted line around a bunch of fields and they said okay these fields belong to Stapleford these fields belong to Toten these ones to Bramcourt so on and so forth now there is the A52 um, it is an impos impassable barrier in all but the remotest of places that does not make for a contiguous community we do know what's happening on the other side of it. I've, I've spoken at length, and other people have, if anybody follows the strategic planning that goes on at Broxtow and at Hire, um, there's, a, uh, there's a huge, great Midlands Engine strategic master plan framework for all of this. We know exactly, with or without HS2, what kind, what scale, and the scope of development that's going to go on in that patch. And uh, so... Uh, so any dotted isolated buildings that we see there at the moment, they're not going to exist. There will not be any residents, uh, any residents in those buildings because they are going to be bulldozed. Simple as. And so, uh, so I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say, oh, but we're, we're their closest post office. By the time this comes in, they, 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 they'll have already been sold up and, uh, and CPO'd. Um, so, uh, so really, and Bardil's, uh, Bardil's is the same. You know, we are going to lose access, and I've been arguing this um, on behalf of Stapleford residents, and I've been arguing against proposals from earlier incarnations of the neighbourhood plan, and I'm assuming they haven't changed, um, that uh, the Bessel Lane access is only going to be potentially, although I've got the county to put, this, uh, to, uh, to put that option back on the table, at the moment, the, uh, the feels I get from the, from the neighbourhood plan is that it's advocating that uh, the Bessel Lane access will only be um, pedestrian cycle uh, with, a, uh, with a public transport bus gate. So that means you can't now drive from one part of the, uh, of the town to the other because don't imagine for a second that the uh, that Toten Lane, and it is incidentally Toten Lane tram stop, not Toten tram stop, which... By extension means it's in Stapleford because you don't have a Stapleford lane in Stapleford and a Toten lane in Toten. But there you go. So, uh, so the the Toten lane um, will be very, very different from what it currently is now. So don't imagine for a second that we're going to get the same level of access to uh, to south of the A52 from that roundabout. I've been arguing that we need a good level of access from that roundabout and that we don't want to be driving up north to, uh, to pretty much where um, uh, Bolt Lane is at the moment, to where, uh, yeah, where there's going to be a brand new big shiny um, slip road. I've been arguing against that, but, it'll, but it, it may well happen. So, uh, so these proposals, and ultimately we're here about communities. We're here to represent and, and, and defend contiguous, cohesive communities. We will have nothing, nothing at all in common with what's going on south of the A52. I'd be surprised if there's any residents living on that patch that we're talking about, and, um, and, and we certainly can't say in a civic sense that, uh, that it's our responsibility to, uh, to look after that bit, that bit just because once upon a time that was the edge of some farmer's field. Option two is not, not even remotely viable. I would like... To, uh, I would like to think that, um, oh, and by the way, it's not the Boundary Commission that's going to be assessing this, it's just Broxdale Borough Council, and really and truly, if we want to uh, claw back any credibility as council in terms of what recommendations we put forward, I suggest we put forward a sensible one that actually has a chance of going through um, so that we can maybe, you know, crow about it and say, yes, we supported that, which will be undoubtedly option four because in everybody's minds that's the most sensible one.
unless there's an ulterior motive, which is trying to uh, trying to claw a load of um, Midlands Engine development money, which isn't going to happen because that's already established. It's going to be devolved. It is going to be taken away even from Broxtow to a to a different level. I'm filling in. Sorry, I've been going on, Mr. Mayor, but I've been filling in a lot of the strategic planning gaps that have either been um, misrepresented or, or misunderstood of what's going on there, because if that's the argument in favour of option two, then, uh, then we, it's, really, it's really not a sensible one. So I stick by my recommendation for, uh, for option four. I'm just going to go to Ross, and then we'll go to the votes. Ross. Uh, I want to put something to you first, Mr Mayor. Mine isn't about one of these particular options. It's about something that was mentioned earlier, um, about the anger that even daring to consider having different options has brought into the community. Um, and then um, Councillor Hallam has said that clawing back. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether you want me to speak now, hold it till after the vote, because it's not going to affect by how I vote here. Please speak. Um, Councillor Hallam said there was a lot of anger um, on Brantford today and in various other um, social media posts about this. And when, when the biggest number of people um, that are going to change on any of these is 1,283, I wonder how many of those people um, have actually been angry about it. I suspect it's quite a small number. I've, I've seen a limited number of names on a Facebook post and things that I've read. <coughs> but I think one of the things that stirred the anger up was two people elected to serve different areas um, of Brockstone and um, putting this out that it was a grab by two particular political parties um, and I, that made me really, really angry mm. On, in, a, in a parish council where politics really should take a back seat for somebody um, on, or two people to try and characterise this as a, a political argument between particular political parties um, trying to improve, I don't know what. Um, I think that was that was unacceptable. I hope at some stage those people will reconsider what they do and um, calm things down and, and try and pour oil onto these troubled waters um, for what they've said. Um, and I'd like to go back to the background here. Um, 1.3 on the document says, and it's moved on the 23rd of July, the Town Council resolved to have a working party. And it was a working party of the Town Council, not um, an, an arm of two political parties. And anybody on the Council could have put their name for it. We said three or four people, and I know one person at least who ended up on the, on the um, working party held back to see if anybody else wanted before they put their name forward. And there was nobody else that was interested in going on the working party. So that, that's why I say, it, I, yes, I was, I mean, I've heard some anger expressed tonight. Tonight I've seen anger expressed on social media. That's what I was angry about in trying to turn this into a, a political, not a match. Mr. Chair, can I, uh, can I make a point of clarification? I never, made, I never, expressed, I never expressed any anger on Bramcote today. Um, I was actually trying to calm things down. I didn't hide my opinion um, because I don't think it's sensible to do that. I think it's always good to be transparent. But I never expressed any anger. I was um, I, I was simply indicating that I uh, that I, di I didn't want um, anybody to uh, to associate um, the conclusion of the uh, of the working party with uh, with all of the town council and by extension all of the town of Stapleford. I have in other channels on social media expressed anger in a generic term about uh, a lot of what's been going on on the town council as a whole recently, not this particular issue. I think it's important to be properly represented. Sue, then we're going to come back to... Let, no, we're going back to Ross first. Um, I did say on Blanket today and other social media posts that I did not say that anything was fixed with until just on Blanket. Councillor, that wasn't about this issue. If I'm angry generically, it's not right for you to bring it up topically. Can I ask, because we've had two proposals and what one obviously needs another second though, that we try and move on to the vote because they have been put forward, haven't they? Yes, they have. Oh. Um, I'm happy to go to the vote. I'll... Yeah, I'll I was just going to point out, sorry, um, Tim's argument for not moving the boundary 
with Bramper. Bramper Island never used to exist once. You know, the A52, that would have been all one community. But the A52 now, you say, creates a natural border there. So it's either one or the other. You know, it's that wasn't there before, you know, years ago for Bramcourt, and now it's split. And it's the same the for Tone End and yeah. for and Stapleford. I did a quick bit of research to see if we've got the four thorns. And we do. Well, we've got half of those thorns. It's with the Stapleford and Beeston Council. So that's how far back it goes. I think that's where all this comes from. But anyway, that's just by the by, and I think now we need to look at the road. So what I'm going to do first of all is because Tim put his one first, we'll go for Tim and then we'll go for Trees. So everybody's happy with that. Okay. So for Tim's vote that we just go for what the council council says, that, what the council says, is that correct? Option four. Option four. Right. Can I have a show of hands for option four? All in favour? All against? All abstain? Option two, which is Theresa's vote. It, sorry, it was Richard. Chair, I want it was Richard. No, it was Richard's vote. My apology, Richard. Um, Theresa's second. It's late. If I'm, if I'm right, I'll... Yeah. Let me clarify, just so we're all clear, right. right. yeah. it's option two, which is Theresa's vote, and it's Theresa's vote. It's option two plus the borough's recommendations. Yeah. 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 Okay, all in favour of option two. Eight. All against? All abstain. Thank you very much for voting and thank you for the very difficult uh, discussion. Yeah, I mean, this is something that the County Council has been doing for a long time, obviously, and I know I've requested bins in the past and they've done it, and there's been no cost to the town council. It, it just worries me that they're trying to pass something on to us and then make us pay for it. Um, is, is it something that is, it, is as easy as we just go yay or nay now, or is it something where we need to have a few people, like a little working group? I know it drags things out a little bit, but, it, you know, someone from each ward, or basically anyone who wants to be on it, just to come up with some areas and that. Because we could sit here all day arguing about different areas to put grip bins, and I think if we all go into our own wards and or, or just you know just have a walk around the whole town as a whole, may, maybe if the town council put some, I'm not trying to put work on you, but I am a little bit. Maybe if we put something on social media, I, I don't know if you can do like a survey on there. You, that's beyond me that one, but ju just asking people, you know, let let the community put some ideas forward, and then if there is a a, a willingness for it, obviously there's going to be a cost. That gets passed on to the public, doesn't it? Let, let's see if it's something they want us to do. And if they don't, then we just nag at the county council and say, you know, we've got a county councillor. Let's just say we want them bins, but we don't want to pay for them. Well, Dave, I don't know. Dave. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, um, let's take the situation that uh, that we're in at the moment. If we ever land up getting snow or a lot of ice here, um, the people here suffer big time. There's no doubt about it. Mm. The county council were probably last on their list to actually have writ anything, and you only got to go in high street when it's not good, um, when it's icy, um, and it take about five days just to lay some salt or, or, or grit on the pavement. 
I think uh, what Richard has just been saying, I think we need to look at the situation of if we're going to do this, how many bins and which and, and, and the areas that we need them in. Secondly, we would need to find out how much the county council are going to charge us, considering that people already pay their uh, tax. And thirdly, we need to know that if they're going to, who's going to actually um, spread the sand under these bins everywhere because up to now the county council have done very, very little in the past. This is what worries me. We're doing another job, we're offering to do another job for the county council, but we've got to pay. The people have got to pay. Um, so it needs clarification, Mr. Mayor, and I mean clarification. And it's right that we should find out all the relevant information first so the town clerk can come back once a little group have got together in different areas and say this is where they particularly like the bins like Richard was saying once we know the numbers of the bins how it's going to be implemented how often is those bins going to be full up who's actually going to put the sand down is it just still going to be the county uh, workman if that is so um, all we're doing is absolutely nothing, we're just paying out money. So I think we need to study this very carefully before the whole council makes a decision. Thank Thanks, you. Mr Mayor. Just before I go to you, John, I'm going to go to Sabrina. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I answer some of those questions? Um, essentially, the parish council does have powers to put bit bins out, so it's a contiguous power that we can do in, in conjunction with the county council. So we are able to do this if we wanted to or following that without even going to the county council. Um, in terms of who will fill the bins, the county will come, if we order for them to come and fill, they will come and fill the bins for us. We will pay for that, obviously, as we would from any other contract that we would um, fill those bins by. Um, and it's for the public to use. So they will go and get, bring, I don't know if they want to bring a bucket or whatever, they bring, get some stuff out and they'll put it wherever they need to put it. Um, it's not for us to do that, it's it's just a public service, basically, it's there for them. Um, and if we, uh, well, when we get our town ranger uh, reappointed, um, we can order stuff in and he can go in and top up if need be uh, with some of it. We've got some tool bags that we can have as well. So. Can I come back there, Mr Mayor? If you just before you do, uh, to give you some idea, usually I'm whilst in the wheelchair that my cover's on the hill street. And if the snow and ice is on those sides, she can't get out. And there's a lot of other people who've got the same thing on different hills all the way through Stapleford. And having said that, we've got straight up today. Stapleford is quite a large place. It's got a lot of pavements and a lot of roads like Brook Hill, um, obviously, um, Stapleford Lane. Uh, we have so many areas, even the, even the High Street, um, those pavements are illegal when they've got our old snow on them. And if we're going to, if we're going to do this, um, I've got to be honest about it, we're going to need a lot of bins, and we're going to need a lot of bins that need filling. So we, this has to be planned correctly before we go any further, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to John, Tim, then Richard. John. Thank you for that, Sabrina, and giving him the, what, what's, I think the idea is now that I think we all know, right, that there's bins that haven't been filled up, aren't used, uh, and this, that, and the other. Now, as Richard pointed out earlier, let every, we're, we're all in different wards. Mm. Let's just get a rough idea how many bins we need, what's what, and what's this. And then it's least in there. Because you know as well as me, Chair, there ain't one on Brook Hill Street. No, there ain't one on Lancaster, there ain't one on <coughs> Cliff Hill, there is one on Cliff Hill, halfway up, yeah. but they're not where they should be. No. So let's just, between us all, let's just get a rough idea. At least again, we're protecting as residents. If we get a town ranger, fair play to him when it's freezing, minus forever, he can go out there and, and, and do it in the right places at the right time. Because we've been moaning about this for years, mm. we've got his chance again. And it's there, isn't yeah. it? Let's just do it. 
Right, we're going for a good self. Over to Tim. Are we biting off more than we can chew, Mr Mayor? You know, we got a... Uh, we got a report earlier on saying exactly uh, exactly how overworked our uh, our very short staff are. Um, it, it appears to me that this is currently the county council's responsibility. I know that one of our county councillors hasn't changed, but we also have a new one who I uh, I would uh, I would hope would uh, would use that role to uh, to pick up on some of this. Is it necessary to burden the town council, who at the moment has no responsibility for it whatsoever, with an additional responsibility when clearly? We're already struggling with uh, with quite a lot, and um, and so many things have been pushed back. I think it's I think it's not. If this comes up every year, then uh, then maybe implement it next year. Give uh, give uh, an opportunity to catch up with ourselves. I'm going to go straight back to John because it's a right reply, John. I can assure you, Councillor Hall, and I will. But on my other point that I made earlier, right, this has been going on for years, mm. right. We haven't had no bins filled whatsoever, right, and nothing's ever been done. So there's an opportunity now for us to do something. I will do my utmost, get some funding from the county to help Stateford. But I'm sure that every county councillor at the county is being asked the same question. But this is the first time that something's been given to us and we've got the opportunity to do something about it. So if we ain't got the staff, let's employ some staff. That's all I say. Thank you. And then we've got <coughs> Richard and Bob. Yeah, I was going to say, my post was still the same then, just to set up a little working group to mm. see what could, it's like, we could even, you know, the working group could ask the businesses on the high street if they want to contribute, because if each shop says, yeah, I'll buy a bag, and they'll chip in, you know what I mean, that ain't cost this town council anything, it's, we're helping the businesses, aren't we, they, you know, we're getting it probably cheaper buying it in bulk, so if someone wants to second my proposal that we set up a little working group as, you know, as a time and a place to suit whoever's up. Does anybody wish to second this? I'll second that, Chair. Yeah. Oh, loads of seconds, so we'll go to John. Not John. David. David. Getting tired. My apologies. Okay. Right. So we've got a suggestion and a proposal and seconder for um, setting up a working group of bins. I'll go to Bob quickly and then we'll go to that for a So it's not quite resolved, as, as Tim and Dave said, show us the money. What does it cost? Do we need to do that? And the bins that are there already. Oh, no. um, they never have been bought. That's his argument. Yeah. Well, are, are, are they supposed to be built? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, we'll just go to hands everywhere. Do you want to come back to that one first and I'll go yeah, to Richard? I was going to say that cited in the report is at 2.5 and the cost of the bin, and that is a fully filled bin the first time that you get it. So if there is no snow and ice, it will stay there until next year and it won't be. Richard. That's what I was going to say. The prices are actually in the report. My apologies, I've got my eyes busted. Jan? <laughs> well, I don't know whether we're special on first drive, but we've already got a bin on first drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bin there? You don't need one on that drive, then. Sue? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got a responsibility to our residents, whether it's yeah. county council's job or not. If I hear of an elderly person break, falling down and breaking their hip, and we have got the chance to do something, I think that's what we need to think about, really. I'll just say this before I hand over the vote. When a person, like my Jackie, or somebody else on one of the other hills, can't get out when there's snow on the ground and ice for days at a time, when it could be easily sorted, it's solely strange for them. And it's also worrying for us, the carers, when they come out on the buggy, you're thinking, oh, I've got to Because Brook Hill Street is a long way down. But yes, um, right, we're going to go to the vote. All in favour with Richard's vote. All for Richard's proposal. All in favour? All against. Abstentions. Substantions. Can I come back on this, though? We're going to have a working group. We need to set it up soon. Or, you know, within the next few weeks. Would I be able to make a suggestion? I know it's not on the agenda. Um, to basically see if anybody would be interested in. Yeah, we don't have to have that on the agenda to, to set those up. So um, if we want to take nominations, then we can just get to the 
Right. I'd like to do that then, yes, please. Can I, can I just make a suggestion as well? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, surely, in our, the areas that we live, you know, each of us, we, we all live in different areas of Stapleford, and we can bring back. So I think, it, that would be it, I think personally, yeah. I think it's up to all of us, yeah. if we want to, um, just to bring in, you know, the ideas and, and where they should be put and how many we need. Rob goes to Sue, and then Richard, who's got his hand up? Is there a closing date to this? Um, and I think there is, and I can't remember what it was, but I think it was yeah. in October sometime, yeah. before the property was oh, okay. in order. So I don't know if we wanted to look at delegating authority to them to make the final decision once we've got um, yeah. the information mm. through. I can see if the town clerk can let us know what the closing date is and then let us know, obviously you need a bit of time to, to put it together, don't you? If you can let us know when you need that information in by then, and then any council that wants to submit something, I think that, that would probably work, wouldn't it, better? That all the councils bring in their reports to that working group, and then the working group passes over to, to bring in the You could even the email them in, couldn't you? It would yeah, save, exactly. save meeting up, like, like exactly. Councillor Gould just said. Yes. It might be quicker. Mr Mayor, are we aware of, of costings and things for all this? Yeah. It's, 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 it's £155 plus VAT for a full bin to be delivered um, in five oh, yeah, days. Right. Yeah. Um, and then back to the salt. Um, the 20 kilo bags of five times of VAT, or there's a bulk, uh, you know, like a ton bag that we get yeah. from building merchants, yeah. and that's 55 pounds plus VAT. But we don't have anywhere to store those, they are open, so if it rains, the, the salt's just gone. Um, so we'd need to do the bags before yeah. we get them. Mm. Yes. On the cop side of it, um, although five pounds plus VAT for a 20 kilo bag, I hope this afternoon. Um, is a good price, yeah. especially as it includes being delivered. Um, it is still a lot more expensive than buying a. If that bag really is a ton, it is a nominal ton. Um, it's it's a lot more expensive than buying it like that. Um, and five the five or three bags won't go very far. It's just a storage. Yeah. Oh, anyway, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> Far more sensible would be if. And again, I get the impression it says says somewhere in the report that they want to deliver it all to the same place, okay. which means it would then be up to us or somebody we somebody we employ to take from central these bags to all the different um, grip bins. And a grip bin would take um, the ones I've seen would probably take five wow. of these twenty kilogram bags. A rough estimate. <laughs> Just get a ton bag, Ross. Get a knife, slit it, and it would straight in, straight in, mate. That's a pile in there. You you get to get just, just get a ton bag, split it, straight in the. Richard. Yeah, no, it's, it's always going to be cheap to buy in bulk, isn't it? It's like you say, it's storage. Maybe, maybe it could be something tied in with some kind of because it's not going to be several times a year we're doing this is it? it's gonna be like a one-off thing probably just before the winter isn't it so we could make an event of it i don't know a winter safety event or something and come along and collect your bags while you're there i don't know and we could, i'm sure we can get some people to help deliver it if, for those that can't no, there's, an, there's enough of us you know it might be an excuse to do like a winter safety event well what i suggest is we write in we find out yeah. who would like them where we need to put them we write an email into the clock and then let the clock pass I was just going to say, I've got an email. So it says oh. it should be noted that orders received after the final of the 2nd of October we cannot guarantee a quick turnaround to mm. deliver a duty limited resource in the period. So it's not a, a deadline as such, but if we want to. And what was that date again? 2nd of October. Okay, thank you. Yes, Bob. Just one technical thing. It's, it's, it's salt and grit, isn't it? So yes. Yeah. How much for salt and grit? Salt to brick is there in a ton bag, for example, one to one or salt to brick in full time. We don't need that detail, I have no idea. I think it's salt and sand and I think it's the from what I can remember. The 
best way to find out is to go into the Order of Merchants. Can yes. just come back on that, they just mine it out of the ground. So it's whatever that particular rock has. So you oh, yeah, yeah. might end up with like two percent salt, you might end up with eight percent salt. So it's really it depending on what they get out. But the idea of the salt and the grit is one's gonna melt the ice, the one's gonna give you traction yeah, so, yeah. so you can walk or drive, so Thank you very very much. helpful. Is it worth it salt? Right, so we need to have a proper vote on delegation to let Sabrina do that once we've got all the information from Sabrina. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy to propose that. Have oh, we got a second there? So you put your hand up first, so you're in it, uh, Teresa. Right, all in favour? Of. Delegating of. authority to me. <laughs> so that when the information's over, it can literally be dealt with very quickly. Yeah, all in favour? All against? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Teresa, I think this one's yours and now for the C. Ooh. No, it's not. It's a brilliant piece. It's a brilliant piece. I've got that one down now. I just want to keep on your feet. Well, Teresa, we know more about the thing. We don't know. But this is a computation that's come through. I was going to ask if uh, Chan Clark could speak up a little. Thank yeah, you. It's a little weak at this back here on the Sorry, side. I do apologise. So, this is a consultation that's. Is that better? Can you hear me? Fine, thank you. Okay. Uh, this is a consultation that's come through from NALC, uh, which is uh, the National Association of Local Councils, of which we're a member. The government is consulting, uh, DEFRA is consulting about um, local nature um, recovery strategies. Um, and so the consultation that's come out uh, with questions that there would like answers to. Um, and so the idea is that we will put forward our thoughts on this, which will go to NALC, who will then form their opinion as a, a government lobby uh, body and, and then feed into the government. Yep, so it's out the campaign. Um, yeah, it's just basically do we want to formally respond to Mount's call for evidence and opinions on it so that they can uh, feed into the bill. Um, they have actually done a lot of the hard work for us by putting it all in together into questions. So actually it wouldn't be too hard to put together a, um, a response. Um, I guess it's more of a working party thing, or I'm happy if, if people were on just to send me their, if they've got the answers to those questions, I'll draft something and then we can put it together like that if, if that's easier. Does that fall squarely into the planning environment? Um, yeah, it does. It's too easy. Um, yeah, it could go through the planning environment to put it together. I think that'd be a good idea. So if we push that forward to planning environment, is that possible? So if any of us want to see them, we have to use these two. Can I have a second, please? Second, that's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that on the capitals, there we go. All in favour? All against? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Well done, Bob. Right, another contentious one. Yeah. Number 12. <laughs> that was a rather evil laugh, Dave. <laughs> well, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Can I just say what it is first? Yeah. Right. To consider allowing bonfires and allotments and any rules that should be applied. Sabrina. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So you may recall that around about the time last year, we, uh, in relation to the, the COVID pandemic, uh, 
agreed that we would not allow bonfires because there were concerns over respiratory issues. We've had complaints before about this. Bonfires have been banned apart from one night of the year uh, where we allow people to have them. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes people go a little bit mad with those and there are massive, great big bonfires that uh, create a lot of smoke and burn for days uh, and cause lots of complaints to come in to the council. Um, I have had some information back from uh, another town council here, uh, which they very kindly sent me, uh, with some advice from the borough council, the environmental um, health team as well. Um, and basically as a council, we need to be careful that uh, whatever people are doing on our allotment sites, although we've, we've rented them to them, so they should be responsible. If it was deemed that there was a statutory nuisance caused by a bonfire, um, then the, the borough council would be coming to us to take enforcement action against us. And of course that would be quite embarrassing between both councils for that to have happened. Uh, and they don't want to be put in that position and I don't think we would want to be put in that position either. However, we know that people do love their bonfires uh, and they want to have them. And they moan about this uh, a lot, that <laughs> they want to have them. I see always lots of queries and people are always asking me, when are we deciding, can we do it this year? Um, the, the key thing that we've sort of gleaned from dealing with this and talking to people about what is it really that you're wanting to burn, um, and most allotment holders talk about um, diseased plant material, so um, there's things that they can't take to the pit because they've got a disease which would be dispersed in the soil if it was used as compost, it needs to be burnt and they will use that then as potash to then put back on their allotment because the disease has been dealt with. Um, and the pit won't allow you to take the disease plant material anyway. And that's not large amounts of, of stuff uh, from what I understand. Um, there are also other options that we could look at for people. I know um, Eastwood have been looking at uh, what they've called hot composting. I don't know any detail about that, but essentially people love it apparently on their site since it's been uh, implemented, which has caused um, them to not need to burn so much uh, material. Um, and really what we're looking at here is it's woody waste that can't be composted quickly that people need to get rid of. So we did mention in uh, I think it's finance committee uh, looking at getting a chipper so that we could have a day where the town ranger goes with the chipper and any wood waste that um, people have got that can go in there, this is true and plant material waste, not obviously for uh, pallets or whatever <laughs> that they've got there as well. Uh, that could be um, a day where everybody can come, they can get the waste chip and then can use that for pasta or mulch or whatever on their allotment. The issue is uh, other waste which people are bringing to site um, and possibly have inherited if it's old sheds and things that were there before, uh, those rotting them and not being able to get rid of those. Um, and I think what we've looked at again with that is can we just get a list of people that would take that waste for a charge probably um, a properly licensed waste carrier uh, to take that. For those people that haven't got a vehicle or they don't want to put it in the vehicle, um, rather than bringing skips to site, which as we know were abused last time that we did that um, and are very expensive to do. So there's quite a lot of options to look at here. Um, one of the things that it was mentioned was people might like the small, I'm going to call it a lid of dusting because that's what it looks like to me. It's just a, a, a pot that we burn things in and it's got a funnel on the top um, so it sort of controls the smoke and makes it go up rather than just spreading uh, all around if it doesn't, if it doesn't be. Um, that's something that I think might be more acceptable to people. It seems more reasonable um, and it would be something that perhaps you would want to allow them to use when they wanted through the winter months, if, if, if we were going to allow those. Uh, so that we've not got a concentration of smoke on one day, essentially, because I think that's part of the issue. People are opening the windows and then the, the house is just filled with smoke from some massive bonfire that's, that's been set on, on the allotment. Um, but as I said, go to council to decide what you want to do with the information that I've just <laughs> sort of uh, poured on you. Um, Right, we're going to go to Dave, Rich, Dan, then Tim. So we'll start off with Mr. Lapper himself, Dave. Uh, I'm standing up for a minute, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Not at all. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I've been made aware that this particular subject has been coming up to the council since 1993. <laughs> and since I've been here since 1920 oh, or whatever, 05-ish, oh, um, 
then this has been a great <laughs> burden for the council. The, probably the biggest burden this council's ever had, to be honest. Now, obviously, everyone wants to keep the allotment holders happy. Everybody wants to keep the people that live around <coughs> excuse me, the allotments happy. But sometimes you've got to say to yourself, time to change. Obviously, Broxtow does not want Stapleton Town Council or any area in Broxtow to start having fires now on bomb, on bomb fires. There are two things here. One is when we used to have the fires, the majority of people used to keep their fires quite low. And then you get the idiot who'll come up and throw a mattress on. Um, these sort of things happen. Now, Obviously, we want to keep the allotment holders happy, and yes, things like those little burners that the town clerk was talking about is a possibility that they, people could use one of those. Um, to start getting skips and hiring skips and everything else, it's eventually, um, it's going to cost a lot more money for the simple reason is that at the moment, as you all know, um, I wouldn't have thought the pipes, shall we say, at Albany, underneath the ground, were that protected or that good. So there's money to be spent eventually by the town council. Uh, so you have to be careful how you're spending the money, because every penny that comes in on rent from allotments has to be spent on the allotments, and that's quite right. So you have to be careful. So if you've got those little burners that the town clerk was speaking about, and um, that, that would be a, some sort of idea, because if you start spending a lot of money, a terrific amount of money on spits and things like that, you've got five allotments, haven't you? If you start spending money like that, you'll ever for be paying out. So I would do this on what I call the budget. Get one of those uh, um, round little burners like they have um, and people can uh, burn as much as they like in it. Um, to have a massive great bonfire on your allotment these days is a thing of the past I'm afraid but it's up to the council what they do but be warned that whatever we do you have to be careful of your spending because um, as I said the water and pipes and things eventually will need to be repaired you need to, might have to have a new one. You've got to have the money there for it. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. And from one burning topic, we'll go over to Rich. Yeah, Thank so you. these burning bins, um, they, they, they don't last forever. And I mean, they're not expensive, they're cheap enough. We could perhaps get them cheaper if we bought them in bulk and then offer them to the people on the allotments. But I haven't got an allotment, so I don't think it's fair for me to say, to, you know, to say what they can and can't do. Um, we've got an allotments committee and we've got a garden holders association. Would it be worth getting all those guys together pretty quickish and, and having a you know letting them fight it out kind of thing and make some decisions and that because you know the garden holders know a hell of a lot more about gardening than me. I always say I don't know the difference between a plant and a weed. Um, you know they're more qualified to probably to make these decisions than, than well certainly than myself. That's where we need John. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, Jan's got a lovely got allotment, if you haven't seen it. So, you know, there is some councillors that's got allotments that know what they're doing. I just, I'm definitely not one of them. So I just, I don't know if, is that something that can be done? Can them two groups be pulled together we'll pretty quick? To says, and then we'll come yeah, back. yeah, of course. Thank you. Right, we've got to go to, um, a second, put my glasses back on. Jan, Tim, sorry, Dan, Tim and Jan. So, Dan. Yeah, just because we talk about fire. Something I want to speak. Well, I've been listening to everything else as well. Um, but no, I believe the fire and rescue services like advice to people on, on having a fire is um, plenty of space around it. Make sure there's a means to extinguish it. And make sure that you always attend that that fire. Um, I've been to quite a number of fires on allotment where they've started off small, but because they've been tucked in the corner because you don't want it in the middle of your allotment, perhaps. Mm. Suddenly it spread to a hedge, it spread to a bush, um, and they quite quickly escalate. Um, very few of them remain attended, so normally we get called out to them quite late at night or very early in the morning. 
Uh, and almost all of them never have a means to extinguish that particular fire as well. Um, so I think if we're going to come back to a liability fund, I, I don't see how we, we could support having fires, especially when there are other means to get rid of this waste. You know, when we're looking at sort of trying to protect the environment and, and be greener, you know, encouraging people to have a fire just doesn't doesn't sit particularly comfortable with me at the moment. Tim. Thanks. Um Glad Richard mentioned about the um, allotment holders um, and uh, I think it's a steering group, isn't it, from this council rather than a committee so that it can include uh, members of the public, allotment holders association um, and, uh, and other interested parties. I was really, really disappointed with myself, Mr Mayor, at um, finance and general purposes um, because I was a part of the group there that made a load of decisions on the um, allotments contracts, the incoming allotments contracts, knowing nothing about it. You know, I, I, touch a, I touch a growing thing and it turns into a robot. That's my expertise as engineering, not horticulture. And, um, and, so, uh, so, and I wasn't qualified to make that decision. I assumed that it had been, that it had gone to consultation with people that actually, you know, would be affected by these contracts. Um, if it did go to consultation or to a steering group, I don't think it was very extensively carried out because I know that a lot of councillors got a lot of very angry people contacting them when that uh, when that news hit their um, in trays. So, uh, so I would say, I'm certainly not in a position to make a call on this. Um, I would completely support um, Richard if it was a recommendation uh, to, uh, to to take it to the um, steering group. Well, I just have to go to Sabrina and then over to you, Jan. Sorry, so I just think it's Jan. important that council does know that this topic, it, it, we're just talking about fires at, at this point, um, but this topic has been discussed extensively at the allotment steering group. We talk to allotment holders all the time about fires, and um, so we know uh, that, that a lot of people want them, um, and a lot of people aren't bothered. Um, and so I think we don't need more consultation, we just need a decision. That's what they want from us, is a decision, what's going to happen. A lot of doesn't have contacted us wanted to say, yes, you can have bonfires. So that is the feedback that we've got. Um, I don't think we need to keep going on and on about it. We need to make a decision for the people that, that this affects. In that case, then, Jan, we're the last person, and then we'll go for a decision on what we're going to do. Jan? Well, um, I, I don't like fire. <laughs> on allotments, and I've had my allotment quite a long time, and I think Richard can testify that it's been... The food tastes nice. <laughs> but um, it's, it's neat and it's tidy, and I take a lot of my lunch away from my grounding uh, at home. If the, we, we can't have kits again, we've tried that, and it was an expensive farce, really. Yeah. It was People took advantage and it was wrong. Uh, it wasn't a wrong decision, it was the way people behave. There is, I, I must assure you that there is water on all the allotment signs, oh, so yeah, that does yeah, put out fire, fire, as you yeah. well know, so <laughs> we don't need extinguishers everywhere. We don't have water there. Apart from it's turned um, off in the winter, is it not? Mm. Sorry? It's turned off in the autumn and winter. It is. I'm sorry you reminded me of that. Yes, it is. So we mustn't have a fire <laughs> during the autumn. <laughs> um, we must have an extension. Uh, the, the idea of the little bins, uh, are you suggesting that the council provide those to the allotment holders or are you suggesting that the allotment holders are responsible for them themselves? They buy them themselves. That's... Yes, that's I wasn't that's recommending that we buy them to some of our bit of no, no, I, I, I didn't yeah. think you were, and yeah. I would have had a tantrum if you'd said, yes, yeah. we are going to buy them, because that's no, taxpayer's no, money. No, no. Um, they call for aren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and and <laughs> you obviously need more than one on an allotment site, you need several. You would have to have a written protocol for the use of them, and everybody would have to adhere to that protocol, because as you Dad, I, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name. Dan. Dan. Yeah. I can never forget that. Dan, Dan, the fireman. Um, yeah. Um, as Dan was saying, you know, um, you have to be very careful. Yes. So we would need a written protocol. Um, and I think that's, apart from K 
take the use away as I do. I've never had a fire. I've never had a bonfire on my side, and I've had it for eight, nine years. It just isn't essential. They just like to, to have the fires. <laughs> you know, it's a big occasion on Mulan Lane in Rotman. That's just that one night. But um, if we can't have them, then I suggest we have these little braziers or something like that, but with a proper protocol. I mean, the braziers themselves, I tend to use them, uh, but I dig everything back into the garden for compost. Yeah. Um, they do get very, very hot. And you can actually burn yourself on a glass of them. Again, you see, this, this, this is all the danger, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm going to pass straight over. I know I said we're going to go to a vote, but Theresa. It's interesting, like you said about, you know, that there is a water supply and it's off parts of the year. We're talking about, you know, a small brazier, we could define the size of it, and if we give a window when in the autumn when they can be used, could we arrange for the water to be on for those two weeks or whatever it well, was? Well, it's then... the council that turns the water off. So we... Is it us that does that? Yeah, they, so, yeah. They yeah. Yeah. so that, that could be, yeah. if, if we had a protocol, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. But, but, but that would be, it, it is essential that we have that. Yeah. And that people follow the protocol. But um, yeah, if the water does go off, it goes off in, in winter and comes back on again in the spring. So I'm going to go to you and then I'm going to go for a vote. I mean, um, can we do a bit of trial and run for a year with the small braziers? Um, you know, because we, we tried the um, skips mm -hmm. and they were abused. Mm -hmm. If we tried this over this winter, see how it went and then review it again in a year's time. If it's got to be constantly reviewed. If it's quick. Can I make a proposal? Yes. Um, sort of got this down. Allotment holders can use small fire bins, we find that better, to dispose of diseased plants and persistent weeds um, when, when attended from, put the dates in, mm. um, where, where there is a means of extinguishing them available. So is that your proposal? Sort of. There's bits and bits need filling in. Can we remove the date? Pardon? Can we remove the date? Why does it have to happen at this time of year? If people have got a safe and um, and personal personal means yeah. of disposing of uh, of stuff in a safe, in that way. Um, the sorry. The yeah, I think it was just people had the windows open yeah. during the summer, so we're trying to cause less nuisance. But you know. But perhaps if it's a, a trial, the allotment holders can use small fire bins to dispose of diseased plants and persistent weeds um, as long as those fires are attended and there is a means of extinguishing them. So, yeah, the move there. Between the months of October and February, which okay. is which is winter. Yeah. But we have, but the reason the, the water is switched off during those months as well is because it could freeze. Mm. Um, and then you, you know, you have problems. Burst pipes, which yeah. we can't afford to fix, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think if it was spread through the year rather than a particular fortnight, mm. that would reduce the nuisance of the smoke. And if, if we were getting complaints still about the smoke, then we would look at it in a year's time. I was just going to say, obviously it's winter, so it rains. People do have water books, and uh, we do have water books under the tap mm. on the lot of sites as well. So mm. you would need a bucket of water from one of those to, mm. to be able to see that you don't need a tap mm. the yard. Before we go to Dave, I'm going to ask Jan, because she'll talk about this. Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I just finish what I was saying, please? Then it will be straight over to you. It is relevant. Re relevant. When is historical time for burning in the allotments? Well, that, that's been decided by the council, and it's usually November, and it's one, one day in November, it's usually November the 4th or something like that, very near bonfire night. I mean, if we look at that and just put um, a week either side, then you've given that a little bit more, and then after that it's closed. Because we can't have this going for all the time, it's just going to annoy people in the summer when you've got your washing out and somebody in the allotment burns it. Not the washing, the fire. We'll go straight over to your good self. Thank you. 
Mr. Mayor, um, uh, uh, Councillor Gould is quite correct. Um, it's the nearest Saturday to Bonfire Night. Yep. Um, that's that's the only day that um, we've allowed over the, over the years for people to actually burn anything. Um, secondly, is uh, we have to be careful regarding the water because yes, the water is turned off, and um, and obviously um, it doesn't come back on. Uh, until March or April time for the simple reason is um, as I said earlier the pipes are not brilliant so they couldn't take a very cold uh, winter but there again if you've got people with little fires um, and obviously you're going to have to have some water on tap right, this, this, this particular problem has come up nearly every year, as I said, since 2000 and whatever. The point about this is, this council's got to make its own mind up once and for all this year, what they're actually going to do about it and keep to it. Because I don't know how many hours have been spent in the last 20 years talking about this. So we really have to make a decision a real good decision and keep to it because if we don't you'll be finding we'll all be standing <coughs> over again here next year thank you very much right then pip then over to ross thank you mr mayor um for those who are gardeners or or allotment holders um what is the best time of year when is there a propensity for these um for, for, well for getting for wanting to get rid of diseased crops or you know, blight it. I think it's potato blight and stuff like that, is it not? When, when, what time of year would that be? Well, it would be about this time, time, this time of year, because right. the, the harvest is all over. I, um, I kind of guess that that might be the case. So, um, it would be this time of year yeah. when people want to get rid of the stuff. But it, 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 it I, I know it's a conundrum and everything like that about these bonfires, but it, it's not. You know, it's not that difficult to actually take your stuff away with you, which mm -hmm. is what I do. I, most most allotment holders have vehicles, and you know I bag it up and I take it yeah. back and I put it in my brown bin and things like that. So there are other alternatives, mm -hmm. but it just seems to be that it's been a traditional thing for allotment yeah. holders to have these bonfires. Well, that, that's that's what I'm trying to. Establish whether, whether the difficulty with bonfires happens because um, people associate it with too much with bonfire night and turn it into a party. Mm. Hence my question about when is the when, when is when it a, appropriate? Yeah, when in practical in a pra in practical terms, when is the necessity to have the braziers and disassociate it with bonfire night <coughs> and lessen the problem? But I I have heard I understand what you're saying, but um, no, I have heard a couple of more than a few people have said it's. That they missed the opportunity to, or when, bon when fires, I shouldn't call them bonfires, when fires were banned, what are we going to do with the blighted crops? Mm. It seems to be an issue, but the council's issue seems to be more about we don't want bonfires, mm. so why are we calling them bonfires? Why are we proposing that that should happen around about November if that's causing the problem? Disassociate the two, I say, and allow for the braziers, don't call them bonfires, don't have it round mm. around about November. And that's a practical solution. Well, Suits both parties. I, I was going to say that that's a, a sensible solution because both parties are then happy. The council. I, I, I would hope and, so. Um, we could try that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Ross, and then we'll finish off with Tim. Ross. Um, I'm trying to word it. Um, I think it, I've got something here, but apart from the date. Okay. Right, I'll go to Tim, and I'll come back to you. Tim. The um, completely agree with disassociating it with Bonfire Night. Um, it's. I would still say let's not let's not date limit this um, because I'm I'm thinking about it. If if you assume th that everybody's saving up their waste that needs burning, and let's assume that they've got no other means um, of getting rid of that. Um, whether it be personal circumstances, blighted crops, whatever, um, they're going to burn it. 
Do you want it sitting, getting musty, mouldy rubbish in the bottom of a bin and then burn it? This is going to create more of an issue with a, within a narrow window of time than if, people, uh, than if people do the burning spread out in small doses over the year. And then I don't think there will be a problem with people's... Let's put it this way. In the summer, people are more likely to have their washing stinking of barbecue than they are a bonfire. Let's be absolutely honest about this. So I, I completely agree with Ross's suggestion. Um, I agree with Mum's suggestion to disassociate it with bonfire night, and I would go one further and say, let's just allow people to manage their own, uh, their own processes by not locking it down to a specific time of year. Right, Ross? So what I've got here, then, is my proposal that a lot holders can use small attendant braziers to dispose of diseased plants and persistent beans with a means of extinguishing the very illness. Okay. On a one year trial. Put a date to it or not? On a one year trial. Don't tell them that. Or review. To be reviewed after 12 months. To be reviewed. But these, bear in mind that the residents are going to go out and buy these braziers. Oh, so don't, just and I think it would be, be dre dreadfully unfair to, uh, to, say, uh, to say go out and spend money, but we might pull the plug next year. So I think David's right with what he said earlier. We've got to be a bit committed. Then they can take back totally totally use them at home if they're that good. Mm. <laughs> Usually under <laughs> plastic. <laughs> oh. mm. Yeah. yeah, I've got two in my well, garden. Well, it depends what you in there, Amy, you know. Mm. I had one a long time ago. Mm. They yes. are good, though. Mr Mayor, you could go round all night like yeah. this. Yeah. Mm. Every meeting uh, John and I have been to uh, over the last 30, yeah. 20 odd oh. years, Our it's the same thing. And like Tim says, just let them use your own common sense and burn all the way through. Right. It's up to them then. And a second, though, no, no date. We know what yeah. we're voting for then. Yep. Uh, on, not for what. Voting on. <laughs> Allotment holders can use small attendant braziers to dispose of diseased plants and persistent weeds with a means of extinguishing out of control fires available. And then to be reviewed in a year. I mean, just put. To be reviewed. To be reviewed. Don't put a yeah. timestamp on it. Making sure you put. No bonfires, right? Make sure you've got that then, just a minute. Small attender braziers implies that, David. Yeah. I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. people uh, right. 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 Should I send this to you? We need to vote on this now. Four. Stop it from going round and round again. So all in favour? All against? Put that light out. Yay. Abstentions? It's unanimous. Well, very well speaking out. from a professional point of view, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Can we'll you pay his overtime if he has to keep working together. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, can you put in the minutes that it was unanimously voted as well? Because then that shows strong... It wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, fireman, I know. I can't argue with fireman, sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't see that. Right. You'll smash your head in. I don't know about that. He's got a big fire engine. Right. Quarter past nine, nearly time to pub. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr Mayor, before you, before you move on, I, uh, I hate to be, uh, hate to be rude, but um, uh, Councillor Hallam and Councillor Hallam, both of us, are, uh, are going to uh, make our apologies now and uh, disappear because Jess needs to go to work and I need yeah. to get her to work. So, no problem. Thank no you very problem. much. Good night. Good night, Jess. Good night. Bye, Jess. Bye, Tim. Mind your coke if you get back quick. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good shift. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, that's all done. We're on to 13. Adoption of HR policies. And I'm going to go straight up to the green room. Thank you, Chair. Um, I must apologise. I've mislabeled the first one. Um, I've got myself confused. Uh, the points of green policy and procedure is not what that is that you've got attached to your papers. It's a staff appraisal uh, yeah. policy and form. These were recommended through to uh, from the HR committee um, in January. Uh, it's just such a there were things that we just had going on at the time that we skipped over, but we just sort of formally approved these. Um, the HR committee were happy with them. Uh, we've been reviewed a couple of times, so it's just the council to just formally accept those policies. Can I ask for somebody to propose these to be well, well, Ross okay. put his hand up first. <laughs> All right, you can close. I'll second it. You're second it. Yeah. Because he'd be. Sorry, Richard. It's probably. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Long somebody does. <laughs> right. Two for one this time. I do it. All in favour? 
That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, Sickness and abscess policies, is that next? Okay, yeah, that's what I thought we were doing anyway. Right, I am going to make a suggestion for number 14. We have an election at the end of the month. I wish to push back 14 until the next meeting so it gives a fair chance for whoever's elected to actually, if they want to come on to it, to come on to the committee. So can I have a proposal for that? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Sorry you, sir. Seconder, Richard. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say, I think that's. I also think it's very kind that you've done that as well. Well, it's what we did last time. Yeah, no, it's, it's fair that you've done that. So all in favour? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thank you. Exclusion of press and public uh, and public.